Configuring your Cradle Point with multiple WAN connections for the purposes of failover starts at the NetCloud administration page, though you can also configure from NetCloud Manager if desired. Once you are logged in, navigate to the Connection Manager page. First, note that you can drag and drop the WAN connections where they are needed, just like this. Every time you move a connection, wait while the router refreshes with the changes. We're going to keep Ethernet WAN in the priority position and cellular will be our backup. Failover settings are referred to as WAN Verify. Find the Ethernet or your primary connection and click on the fourth gear icon to the right to access this feature. The WAN management window will open and have WAN Verify selected on the left. Check the box to enable the stability check if desired. This will verify the WAN interface is stable before being considered fully connected. However, if no other WAN interface is fully connected, this check is ignored. This is useful to prevent failback to an unstable interface but does not prevent immediate failover. We're going to leave this unchecked for now. The monitor IPv4 while connected option helps verify if the connection is online or offline. We're going to set ours to use the active ping method. Note that this can use a minimal amount of data per month. Adjust the idle check interval to control how often the connection is checked. Set a ping address next. We're using Google's DNS. The router may need to retry the query several times. The retry interval determines the interval between retries. The retry count determines the maximum number of retries attempted before deciding the connection has failed. The total time required to detect a connection failure is the product of the retry interval and the retry count. We'll leave these at the recommended default settings. We're also not using IPv6, so we'll leave that off. Next, we'll configure the failback settings. Click on Failback on the left, set the mode to Usage, Time, Immediate, or Disabled as needed. Select Usage if you'd like the failback to be based on the amount of data transferred over a period of time. This is a good setting if you don't want to interrupt the current connection until the data rate is below a configured threshold. Choose the Time option to failback from this interface based on a set period of time. This is a good setting if you have a primary wired WAN connection and only use a modem for failover when your wired connection goes down. This ensures that the lower priority interface remains online for a minimum configured period of time before failback is attempted. For example, in case the higher priority connection is dropping in and out. The immediate option allows failback to a higher priority WAN interface as soon as it is plugged into the router or when there is an interface priority change. If you don't want failback to occur, set this to disabled. Configure the required settings as needed, then click Save. We'll go ahead and set ours to usage and then set the threshold to normal. The rest will be left as default. After we save the settings, it is normal for the WAN connection to go offline temporarily. Give it a few moments to reconnect. Now that we've configured our primary WAN, we'll repeat this process for our secondary connection, which is on cellular. This time, when we configure the WAN verify settings, we'll set the check interval a bit higher so that we don't use as much data. The rest of the settings will be the same. Remember to click save when you're done and give the connection a few moments to reconnect. That's all it takes to set up a reliable failover and failback configuration on your Cradle Point router. Thank you for watching and please remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more of our videos.